Uh, well, it took seven years, so you can sort of guess that uh, it wasn't um, it wasn't entirely smooth running the whole time. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think over the over the course of seven years, I think we probably spent six months in the studio doing it. You know, so it wasn't like continuous process. If it was a continuous process, we wouldn't be standing here today. <laughs> We'd never speak to each other again. <laughs> um, I. And uh, yeah, I think that the, the album was, it just took a, a long time because I couldn't really figure out, we, we had a lot of music written, um, we had 600 songs written and, and uh, just not, not hardly any lyrics. And, um, and that's what took the longest time. Yeah. I just couldn't figure out what to write about. I always find that people have a different process for writing. Is it, is it like you get the chorus, you get a, you get a beat, you get a, a one, Line. What's that process like? Do you guys all come together on a, you know, how how do you kind of come up with? I mean, besides knowing the topics of what you want to write about, but how do you kind of develop those songs? What's that process like? Is it like pieces of paper? Like I've talked to artists before that write on little post-it notes, and then they've got an idea, and then that idea blossoms into a bigger idea. It's literally, um, it's literally. You, I just put my hand on the guitar. Wow. chords happen and then <laughs> a melody then a melody happens and then that's the easy bit that's the easy 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 bit and then the lyrics take forever because um, I don't ever want to write something put something out in the world that isn't that doesn't have heart in it um, but uh, it's funny that um, it's funny that heart writing lyrics with heart takes a lot of head you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't mean that in a sexual way. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, it uh, <laughs> takes a lot of thought. It takes a lot of thought. Probably the way I should have put it. <laughs> well, I definitely want to get to some of these questions here. Uh, tell everybody your name. Paula. Paula. And what's your question? Uh, how has social media changed um, the band's outreach? Because certainly seven years ago, it wasn't the platform that it is now. And then touring with Ed, you've got a lot of um, fans that are seeing you for the first time that are so much younger. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like it's your fan base that has always been there reaching out to you on social media, or do you see a lot of influx from the newer, younger kids? Uh, yeah, hi, Paula. Um, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, I think, you know, a mixture of both. Yeah, there's been people that have been, um, from we first went on Twitter, that, you know, people have been asking us questions since then. But we, we were very... We were very reluctant to go on Twitter in the first place. Um, it was actually Ed that forced me personally to go on Twitter. He's like, you've got to get on this thing. What are you, a caveman? <laughs> and, um, I was very reluctant. I just thought that it would, um, it seemed to me like a lot of um, people grunting at each other. It may as well have just been kind of like, uh, uh, it seemed very unsophisticated to me, um, uh, like limiting the amount of characters that we can communicate with. Mm -hmm. It seems like it was destined to cause trouble. <laughs> well, thank God that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, so I, you know, like we just sort of made a sort of a pact with each other that we would always kind of keep it, keep it positive and keep it light and keep it kind of. Um, um, just about the things that we loved, mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of that's kind of helped. I think kind of our Twitter is, and Instagram and social media is always kind of like just just about things that we love, and therefore you don't get that get negativity back. Not that much anyway. <laughs> Sometimes people just tweet your band or shit, but <laughs> <laughs> or you're horrible. Mostly, or you're horrible. And somebody tweeted that. Somebody tweeted that yeah, about a couple of weeks ago. You guys are horrible. I was like. Because oh. <laughs> the word horrible has like, it's like, you really gotta mean that, don't you? <laughs> it's not like you guys are shit, where, which could be just somebody, you know, drunk and a dick, but um, you're horrible. I was like sitting there for hours going, fucking hell, am I horrible? <laughs> I feel like we're going to see that on mean tweets soon, on Bally, right? Yeah. Like, here's Snow Patrol, no reading the mean tweets. Yeah. We'd have to get a lot more successful to get on that show. But... <laughs> so does anybody else have a question? Because I definitely have a question about what, what happens um, when you're off stage. You know, I always find it interesting what happens kind of behind the scenes. If you guys had a day to yourself, not with your families, not with friends, uh, just a day that you can do something for you, and you're not on the road, and you're not 
performing, what do you like to do? 24 hours of sleep. <laughs> 24 hours of sleep? Yeah. We curl up together. <laughs> <laughs> We're like a little family of badgers. Hibernation. Yeah. yeah. Um, we all, we all do different things. Johnny never ever stops working. Um, that's his relaxation. He goes and builds something. Uh, he's, uh, he's built our entire um, kind of the system that we use to um, when we're on tour. The, basically, the, 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 I don't even know how to describe it, but sometimes I'm on a plane sitting beside him and he's like got this NASA style thing <laughs> on his computer that's like just all these sort of digital wires going um, to each other. and. Uh, um, by sticky tip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then, yeah, there's the, there's slightly unsophisticated parts of it as well that are held together with gaffer tape. But um, so that's what he does in his spare time. Co-writes with uh, lots of other um, artists, including it. Um, I tend to these days when I, I stopped drinking two and a half years ago. So that's kind of that's really opened up my days. Um, so I go out and see the city that I'm in and try and. Get it kind of because when you're on tour, you you, you kind of do uh, things. I don't know if anybody ever watched uh, Scooby Doo uh -huh. when they were growing up. You know, the backdrops would uh -huh. be like the same backdrop, like just three times. And then the <laughs> backdrop would be, like, would be like just change, <laughs> and they'd be running in, uh -huh. in place, uh -huh. not moving anywhere, but the backdrop would change. So that can that that's that's the tour bus hotel gig, tour bus hotel gig, tour bus hotel gig. Um, that's the way it used to be. Um, and you throw up. Uh, hangover in there as well. <laughs> Tour bus, <laughs> hotel, gig, all pervasive hangover. Um, and uh, and these days it's like, uh, for me, I just go off and wander and see museums or see you know whatever, um, get a feel of the city. And touring has actually become so much easier. Yeah. Because you feel like you're actually, you're actually um, experiencing something rather than just a groundhog day kind of. Thing. So uh, tomorrow they're in Atlanta, and then they're not on break, but they're going to be in the UK. You're doing some promo, and then you're going to be doing some UK dates as well. So after this, when are you going to be back in the US? When 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 can we see you again? We're back in April, May next year. So, right. Yeah. So right. that's those are our own shows. So they'll be a lot smaller than the shows we would play with Ed. <laughs> yeah. Not stadiums. Yeah, for sure. All right, we're live at our Golden Dinosaurs performance. Are you guys ready for some music? Let's do this. Give it up for Snow Patrol. Thank you. 